Hello. In this video, we are going to analyze an air standard auto cycle with a, with a volumetric compression ratio of 10. I'm assuming you're already familiar with the auto cycle, which is covered in chapter 7 of your textbook. I've drawn the cycle on a TS diagram. One is my beginning state uh, uh, the, the, of the charge of air, and then 1 to 2 is the isentropic compression followed by 2 to 3 constant volume heat addition. In fact, QE is one of the desired uh, variable you want to find. And then 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion, and 4 to 1 is constant volume heat rejection. So as you can see, uh, an auto cycle consists of four closed process problems. So it is assumed that you're already familiar with how to analyze a closed process. As far as test solution goes, I've already logged in, and if you go to test apps and follow the closed process branch, closed, closed generic simple process branch, under PG model, you will find several closed process examples. For instance, uh, this one is a constant pressure process analyzed here. This is a constant entropy process involving a gas analyzed here. So you can watch these videos uh, first before attempting to solve an auto cycle problem. So for the auto cycle problem, let's get started. We will follow the, the closed specific branch uh, into IC engines and reciprocating cycles and click the PG model, HTML5, that launches the app. Okay, uh, state one is already selected as air, but before we start the problem, let's Define a few parameters in the I.O. panel that will make the parametric study much easier. So we click the only the user code um, button and let's introduce some variables. So we'll call the volumetric compression ratio R uh, as 10 and, and T max will, will, will define the maximum temperature with the variable T max 900 uh, Kelvin. Remember that in the I.O. panel whatever variable we, we define they are they must be in SI units. Okay, so so as you can see, they have been recorded here. R is ten. This is our compression ratio. Maximum temperature is nine hundred Kelvin. With this constant given uh, defined, we can go to the state panel and start computing. So the uh, we know the pressure is given to us for the state one hundred kPa. Temperature is twenty degree Celsius, and the volume is given to be. 500 cc, your centimeter cube. So we select cc and we calculate. The state one has been completely found. For state two, we know that it's an isentropic state. So entropy remains constant equals S1. Of course, mass doesn't change. They're all closed system in an ideal auto cycle. And finally, the volume is one-tenth. Instead of writing volume one divided by 10, we'll write volume divided volume one divided by R. That way we can just go change R later and, and do a parametric study of how all this, the entire solution depends on the compression ratio. So state two is now found. Uh, so to save time, I've already calculated state three in a different panel. I'll just show you what I've done. So state one and state two, just now we found. And for state three, uh, we know it's a constant volume process between two and three. So I entered volume three equals volume, mm, volume three equals volume two. And the temperature three I wrote equals T max because that's given. Of course, mass is constant. So state three has been found. For state four, as you can see again, uh, it's isentropic process between three and four. So here we have S4 equals S3. And of course, uh, the volume at state four is same as state one and mass doesn't change. So that's enough information to find state four completely. Uh, you can go to the graphics panel and you will see one, two, three, four are just like we expected um, uh, from our general knowledge of an auto cycle. Okay, now that we have calculated all the four states, we, we got to pro uh, analyze the processes. We go to the process panel, 
And the first process is isentropic compression. We load the inlet uh, beginning and the final state. And we know it's an adiabatic compression process, so a Q equals zero. And the other kind of work, which means shaft and electrical work, are already zero, already set to zero. We know they are zero. And we click the calculate button to find the external work. Uh, so this is the isentropic work. It's negative because work is going in. Uh, likewise, we can go and calculate, uh, you know, process two. I've already done so, and I'll just, you know, just walk you through what I have done here. For process two, I loaded state two as the beginning state and state three as the final state. That's our heating process. And, of course, the boundary work is zero because volume doesn't change. Other types of work is zero because there's no shaft or electrical work. And look, the heat transfer is calculated. Uh, you may be surprised that entropy generation is negative. That's mainly because by default, the boundary temperature is 298. We are after all heating the gas to 900 Kelvin. So boundary temperature cannot be uh, so low. Suppose, so if we had a boundary temperature of let's say uh, 1000 Kelvin in this heating process, you'll notice the entropy generation will become positive. In other words, if TB boundary temperature is less than the gas temperature, how can you heat up the gas to 900 Kelvin? That's what the negative entropy generation points out, that there's something impossible going on. Okay, for state three, we have isentropic expansion. So again, three and four has been loaded, and other type of work is zero, and that calculates the expansion work. And finally, uh, the heat rejection between state four and one, again, is... is it's almost a mirror of our process one where we, uh, we calculated heat addition. So heat rejection is found to be negative because heat is going out. Now that we know, uh, you know all the processes have been an analyzed, you go to the cycle panel and the fact that the cycle is complete is, is shown by this check mark. If we did not have all the processes analyzed, we'll find the cycle is incomplete. And every variable uh, that you might you know, be interested in about the cycle is already calculated. So most importantly, the maximum temperature was given to us. What was the maximum pressure found? Uh, what is the thermal efficiency right here? Uh, MEP, so all these variables are here. So let's, let's write down the thermal efficiency for a second and suppose, uh, which is one of the very interesting or most important quantity, uh, suppose we are interested, uh, what will happen if I increase the uh, maximum temperature to thermal efficiency and let's say the net power, network. Network means in one cycle we are getting 0 0.0417. Let me write it down on my notepad here. Okay, so we'll compare this result. So we want to know how this number and this number change, say if we change the maximum temperature or if we change the compression ratio. So let's go to the I.O. panel and let's just filter all the user codes. Clicking this button brings up all user codes. So let's say maximum temperature is not 900, but we let's say we increase this to 1200 Kelvin. So we do a calculate here. So we register the maximum temperature and then all we do is click the super calculate button. And notice all the numbers have been updated. It's still a good idea to go to the graphics panel to make sure nothing is wrong. One, two, three, four. This is how the cycle should look like. And come back to the cycle panel. And notice that uh, the net power network has been increased from uh, tremendously from 0.04 to 0.11. That's per cycle, of course. And the efficiency, on the other hand, is 60.24. It's barely it barely budged. Uh, but suppose we say, okay, now in addition to increasing the temperature, by increasing the temperature, we increased our net output of the cycle. Suppose we go and say, okay, let's say now what will happen if the compression ratio is increased? Let's say we say instead of 10, it's 12. So let's do a calculate to, so now we have a higher maximum temperature, higher compression ratio, and we do a super calculate, updating everything. And take a look at the result now. Uh, not only, uh, you know, my work output is high, it decreased slightly than before. From 0.11, it went down to 0.109. But look at the efficiency, went from 60% to 63%. So having a higher compression ratio uh, raises 
the efficiency, thermal efficiency of a cycle for an auto cycle. Uh, I'll stop here and let you, you know, pursue other parametric study. And for that, uh, you know, the process is that you declare these variables in the I.O. panel, whatever variable you want to study. Uh, let's say uh, the, the volume of the cylinder is a variable. Then I'll declare here volume and go back to state one. And instead of uh, entering the volume directly, I would just put it, instead of putting a number, I lose the variable. So that's how uh, test step can be used not only to verify a manual solution, but to study uh, different, you know, what if scenarios, what will happen if I change this, what will happen if I change that. All right, I'll stop here. And next time, let, let us solve a diesel cycle problem.